Hello friends of human spaceflight, and welcome to another week in review as we look into the space industry and notable launch activities from around the world. Coming up, Electron to the rescue! With a mission for NASA having already lost two of its satellites from a previous launch attempt. The highlands are alive with the sound of construction. Anyone regret wearing headphones? I know you do. You, right there in the back. Something exciting is brewing for the future of space here. Fancy a trip to the edge of space? This new venture could give you a new perspective. And China's mystery space plane recently returned to Earth after a lengthy mission. So we took the challenge to try and find out more about this. The question is, did we? And with that, let's get cracking, shall we? NASA's second Tropics mission, dubbed Rocket Like a Hurricane, saw Electron poised for launch from Rocket Lab's Complex 1B Mahia Peninsula, New Zealand earlier in the week. So what does the Tropics acronym mean? I thought you'd never ask. Time resolved observations of precipitation structure and storm intensity with a constellation of small sats. Tropics. Lifting off at 1pm local time, the fourth Rocket Lab launch of 2023 saw Electron roar skywards with two CubeSats enclosed in the payload fairings, with a total payload mass of a tiny 10.68 kilograms. This was NASA's second Tropics mission. Sadly, Tropics 1 failed to reach orbit on Astra's rocket 3.3 back in June 2022. Despite this, the remaining four CubeSats will still provide detailed observations of tropical cyclones compared to traditional observation methods. Passing Max-Q just over one minute into flight, and all was nominal here with the ascent, at two and a half minutes into the dash to space, the first stage main engine cut off, followed by stage separation and ignition of the second stage Rutherford engine. The fairings were released just over three minutes into the mission, exposing the CubeSats to the vacuums of space. At almost seven minutes into the flight, the second stage jettisoned two depleted lithium polymer batteries that power the Rutherford engine's electric pumps. This is done in order to reduce vehicle mass as it escapes Earth's grasp and heads to orbit. Two minutes later, we saw the second engine cut off before the kick stage took over to fulfill the final steps of taking the payload to a 550 km low Earth orbit. After approximately 20 minutes, the Curie engine ignited for just over two minutes to reach the target altitude before the payloads were successfully deployed some 33 minutes after liftoff. Part two of the Tropics launch is dubbed Coming to a Storm Near You will launch no earlier than May 16th. Buy your tickets now. Located in the Scottish Highlands is Sutherland Spaceport, previously known as Space Hub Sutherland. Owned and operated by Scottish launch provider Orbex after signing a 50-year lease on the site in early 2022. Finally, groundbreaking began last week to build the first UK mainland vertical launch site and a first for Western Europe, although Saxe Vord is also currently under construction. As you can see in these images provided by our good friend Space Nessie, and also this footage shot at an earlier time by our editor Rich LB. There's not much to see just yet, but watch this space and be sure to give Space Nessie a follow whilst you're at it if you want to stay up to date as things happen on the ground. When we talk about space and how we get there, our minds generally drift towards rockets, right? Sure, there's also space planes too, and of course, let's not forget the iconic space shuttle. Other players have popped up over time too, Reaction Engine's very own Skylon, Virgin Galactic Spaceship 2, just to name a couple. But did you know there's yet another way? Perhaps even a simpler way? So let's think back, if you will, way back, before even the Wright brothers invented their wondrous flying machine. Pretty much all we had before that were hot air balloons. Filled with lighter than air gas, they used it to generate lift from the ground. These eventually evolved into dirigibles like the Zeppelin. These giant ships used hydrogen, which is the lightest gas of them all. However, after what happened with the Hindenburg, it was suddenly decided that perhaps helium should be used instead. Less, um, boomy that way, I guess. Though with the advent of the airplane, that pretty much saw the end of the balloon era, apart from things like weather balloons and whatnot. And if you plan a balloon flight really, really well, you can reach quite far up in the outer layers of the atmosphere, nearly all the way to space. Back to present day, and what if we told you that you could take a balloon ride up to space? Would you do it? Let me know. Tell me in the comments down below. I'm really interested to hear about it. Personally, probably, actually, that would be really sick. 
Space Perspective is a company that is offering just that, a balloon ride up to space. Headquartered at Kennedy Space Center in Florida, they offer the smoothest ride to the edge of space, more specifically to the altitude of 30 kilometers, roughly some 100,000 feet. The spaceship Neptune's balloon is filled with hydrogen that is made from renewable resources. The capsule carries eight passengers and a pilot all in luxury conditions. So, how much does it cost? The tickets for this journey will be about $125,000 each. The flight itself is two hours on ascent and another two hours at the peak of the ascent spent watching the Earth go by, and then another two hours descending back down to the Earth. So, all in all, a much longer experience when compared to the short-lived profiles of Blue Origin's New Shepard or Virgin Galactic Spaceship 2. Though it's also worth noting that both of the aforementioned profiles have a higher altitude reached during their flights. Neptune itself is launched from a 100 meter long ship in the Gulf called the MS Voyager. The ship was certified by the American Bureau of Shipping for marine launches recently, so the test flights will happen sometime this year, with commercial launches planned to start from 2024. Space Perspective are not the only ones heading to space via balloon. Player 2 Worldview has joined the game! Currently taking reservations for future rides to space from the seven destinations around the world, Grand Canyon, Amazon Rainforest, through the Northern Lights of Norway, Giza and Egypt, the Serengeti Kenya, Great Wall of China, and finally the Great Barrier Reef Australia. Worldview is claiming to offer a luxury experience for the price of just $100,000 per passenger. Although not pocket change compared to say an $82 million ride to space station aboard a Soyuz or $52 million on a Dragon, it opens space to a new class of people. No longer is space for the super rich or the government, but considering how many people climb Mount Everest yearly at an estimated cost of around $60,000, it's a steal to experience the overview effect. And that is Worldview's mission to allow as many people as they can to experience the overview effect. Worldview and Space Perspective are both American companies located in the US. Is the balloon flight business only for the businessmen of the new world? No worry, Europe is not left behind here. Player 3 has joined the game! The French Zafalto company is also creating a similar flight profile, a balloon the size of Sacre Coeur of Paris. Indeed almost heart-shaped, Six passengers and two crew members on board of Celeste, the capsule with luxury conditions. Free reservations is available for 10,000 euro and the ticket is barely 120,000 euro. For that price, the travelers get a world-class panorama of 25 kilometer altitude, a total of six hours of flight, and selected delicacies from the best French chefs with top quality wines to taste. Their first spaceport will be in Toulouse, and Cefalto is planning to open further spaceports in North and South America, in the Middle and Far East, and in Australia as well. From a technological point of view, all three space ballooner companies offer a different solution for the landing. The Space Perspective's Neptune is splashing into the sea, while his Worldview Explorer reaches denser atmosphere, on the way back it is released from its carrier, temple-sized balloon, opens a parafoil and descends with that. This solution helps to aim the targeted landing area near the spaceport. Cefalto's Celeste has airbags to cushion the landing on the ground. All three companies are very proud of their solution safety level. Cefalto is coordinating their development and technologies and is in partnership with the proven European space companies, agencies like ESA and CNES, the French space agency. Celeste's capsule body is made of composite fibers, Thus, it is exceptionally strong and light at the same time. Worldview is perhaps the most experienced with actual flight operations, as they've conducted 120 flights up to this point, and are also working together with different business entities and government agencies in the US. We should note that Space Perspective, Worldview, and Cefalto are very proud of their low environment footprint, especially compared to rocket flights. Though mentioning one degree Celsius of temperature increase on Antarctica because of a thousand rocket flights is a bit of an over-exaggerated statement. Okay, it's a very exaggerated statement. Still, we can't dispute that a balloon flight is more environmentally friendly compared to a powered, especially rocket-powered mission. Unfortunately, the ticket prices are also tropospheric, yet getting the overview effect. But perhaps it will change. 
As such enterprises will be more common, perhaps we will have a better chance to watch the Earth's curvature from up there, flying higher for a lower price. We're yet to see. On Monday 8th of May 2023, after 276 days in space, the mysterious Chinese space plane returned to Earth, though not much is known about it. Internet conspiracies range from an X-37 clone, a spy balloon mothership, and even a mission to closely investigate USA spy satellites. What we do know for sure is that the CCP are tight-lipped about it. So tight-lipped, they did not release any official pictures of it. Our team looked high and low for information regarding this space plane, and from what we can tell, it's likely a clone or very, very similar to the Boeing X-37, often called the OTV, an acronym for Orbital Test Vehicle, the US's very own secret space plane. Although the United States Air Force are a little more open with sharing pictures of it, the X-37 has been just as mysterious and surrounded in rumor as the Chinese counterpart. Well, that's a wrap for now. Not many launches to cover again this week. Thankfully though, there is always plenty of other amazing news out there to share with you. We look forward to bringing you the latest in developments in space news next week and some fun along the way. Thanks for watching and remember, onwards to the future. And China's mystery space pint. <laughs> At almost seven minutes into the flight, the second stage engine steps into the lithium. <laughs> <laughs> There's cake? It's a lie. Ugh. Pretty much all we had before then was hot balloons. No. What? 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 <laughs> That'd be funny though.